Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's your girl, Linda Marcus Smith. I know, three names. I have a guest with me today. Who the thunk it? Yeah. I've got another guest, and my bangs are acting crazy, but hey. So the guest I have for you today is the amazing, sitting over there, Carol Johnson. Yeah, hi, Carol. Hi, Linda. Hi. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. I know you in real life. Let me say the intro that you sent me. So we start off professionally for all the oh. nerds and geeks out there. Hello. <laughs> I know you're out there. Okay. Carol Johnson. Just back from Las Vegas, performing on Keenan Presents, the pop-up festival. She is the goddess of humor on Lockdown Living Room Comedy Show for four years now. Follow her on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook as Carol Johnson Comedy. My friend, soon to be yours, the one and only Carol Johnson. Yay. Hello, everyone. Hi, Carol. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Tell people where you're at and what you're up to today. Today, I'm in San Diego. Tonight, I'm actually not performing. I'm going to support a friend who's performing. But Friday, I'm performing with Dat Fan, which is always fun. Uh, then Sunday, driving out to... Chandler, Arizona, never been there before, uh, to do a pet rescue charity. So if anybody is in Arizona, come out and see the show. Absolutely. Laugh and save animals. Oh, that's so great. What club will you be at? Mike Drop Mania. Very cool. Very cool indeed. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to tell some people on Facebook about that. So send me a couple flyers so I can share them after this. Okay, great. I will. Yes. So let's, I talked to you during the pandemic. You went and studied what we said. And I, I felt I was lousy back then, just learning what to do. But you were great. I hate looking back, you know, I just want to look forward. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So remind people who you are, where you came from. How long have you been? Tell us your story in your words. My, oh, my story. I always thought I was funny. I, wait, I know. I just thought about this the other day. When I, I started out as a dancer, but I would always make the parents that would come watch rehearsals laugh. They called me Lucille Ball because I did a bunch of physical comedy. So um, I've always liked making people laugh. Got married, husband told me I wasn't funny, so put it on the back burner till he turned me in for a newer model <laughs> with larger headlights and more junk in the trunk. <laughs> um, and then started comedy. So it will be five years this September. Very cool. Very cool yeah. indeed. Yes. And so how do you feel comedy has been going for you? It's been going really well. I'm I'm traveling a lot more. Last year, it was all about trying to get booked as much as I could. This year, it's more about trying to pick experiences that I want to, to be a part of. So that's been really fun. So I'm hosting the first show at the Laugh Riot Girl Festival up in Los Angeles. That's June 4th. So I'm excited about that. That's Bobby Oliver. She always puts on the most amazing uh, festival. I think this is the 10th year. So it's going to be a good one. I love her so much. I have She's to get really... out there for one of these days. I got to get out there for a festival. You do. Or just tell her that you're coming out. I'm sure she'll book you. Just, you know, reach out. Thank you. Tell her you're going to be in town. That's so cool. Thank you. So... Um, you're, you're in comedy, you've been doing it five years, tell people coming up behind you, newer comedians, some of the things that you've learned along the way that could not cut time out of their exposure, but that could like enlighten them 
you've learned some tricks of the trade in five years. So you have some nuggets you can drop. Well, and the first and best nugget is comparison is the thief of joy. So don't compare your journey in comedy to anyone else's. We are all individuals. Enjoy, enjoy the journey. Life is not a destination. It really is a journey. Um, people say you do as many open mics as you can. I don't know. Uh, some of them are good. If you <laughs> if you can make other comedians even smile, that's really a good thing. And if you can make them giggle a little, you know you've got a really great piece. There's tons of books out there. Find your own way to do comedy. When I first started, I always read all of these books that said, oh, you have to sit down every morning and write a couple of hours. Who has time for that? And that that does not help me at all. I come up with my best stuff when I'm driving in my car. Do you? Yeah, I do. So driving from San Diego to L.A. a lot for shows gives me a lot of time for new material. That's awesome. That's very interesting. I wonder what yeah. it is about driving. And is it something about relaxing, leaving the past behind, looking? I don't know. I think it's kind of because your mind kind of goes into neutral while you're driving and your mind can wander. Hopefully not too much. I do have those days when I get to some place and go, Whoa, how did I get here? <laughs> so when I'm when I'm going for a daily walk, that's when all kinds of new thoughts come to me. So it's kind of like my version of driving. Right. Yeah, so I get it. I just I just couldn't walk to LA. It would take me days. Yeah, yeah. That's that's for hopeless overachievers anyway. Yeah. But it's good for you. They say walking's the best thing for your brain. It's just that one foot in front of the other thing is just really good for us. It is so mindful. Yeah. Yeah. Purposefully mindful. It's it's so, you know, like I, I like to walk like 10,000 steps a day, 20,000 steps a day. It, it's just so great. I don't know about That's healthy, right. if it makes you healthy, it's supposed to, but at least it keeps you busy, you know. <laughs> that is nice. That really is nice. Yeah. Somehow I accidentally downloaded a fitness app and it always tells me, come on, you can keep doing it because I never use it. So <laughs> it thinks that I'm not doing anything and it's like. Stop the peer pressure. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, tell people some things that you've done in the last year that you think were really worth doing. Because you get into festivals and you travel and you do shows and, and, and traveling alone. So drop some of that and then we'll get into you plugging everything you want to plug. Okay, well, okay. the... the, the the once in a lifetime kind of thing I just did was for my uh, lockdown living room comedy show family. They live within the belt of the eclipse. So they had an eclipse festival, a fest, you know, music and comedians. And that was awesome. So that's what I mean, picking different experiences. Um, I did a festival last year in... Greensboro, South Carolina. I think it was the New South Festival. I've never been to the South. <laughs> but Green, this city, it's such a hipster area. It's beautiful. It's so supportive of the arts. There were theaters all over the place. People were so nice. Uh, shows all sold out. So the audiences were great. It's always good to have a sold out crowd that makes it magical. Um, like I said, just came back from Las Vegas doing Keenan. He is the nicest guy. He really, truly is so nice. Really nice. I'd never met him before, but just the greatest guy. And again, got to network and meet a ton of new comedians. That was awesome. Um, I think there were 80 of us there. So that was very cool. Got to hang out with some of the female comedians I know from LA that we really never had time to just hang out before. So that was really nice. Yeah. Um, what else? 
Well, I saw you at the one in New York, the Ladies Room Festival. That was awesome. That was so good. I love that, that. was that was really great. That was great. I loved that. that I'm was- going to oh, this is a, gotta plug this too. June twenty first in uh, Severna Park, Maryland. I'm I just put together a charity show for a woman owned bookstore. Hi, Melody. See, <laughs> Uh, to help her because I love independent bookstores and so many of them are struggling now. So I've got eight comedians that are willing to donate their time. Most of them I've never met, just reaching out to people that suggested other people. And that was really lovely. So that's going to be fun. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. did Did a charity show in Texas last year. Never really wanted to go to Texas, but (laughs) I tell you, so many oil wells, we are never getting off of oil fuel. I'm sorry, people out there. (laughs) This is a funny story. This is not about comedy. This is real life. Every time I go to Texas, they try to give me an electric vehicle because I'm from California. And the first time they did it, it was not charged. So thank God I did not get out of the parking structure because I tried to put in the navigation and it said, oh, you can't go there. So never again, never again. There are no chargers in Texas anyway. That was mean, right? You know how big Texas is? (laughs) Really, really, really big. San Antonio was pretty cool though. What'd you like about San Antonio? I did. This was, oh, the owner is so nice. Um, Upstage Comedy Lounge in uh, San Antonio, Texas, the Femme Fiesta. This was his first one. I'm sure he'll do it again. Uh, Again, I got to hang out with comedians I know that live around Texas. So that was great. Haven't seen them in quite a while. Wow. So that was fun. I could go on and on and on. It's Keep... just been so much fun. Yeah, you're doing great out there. You're just killing it. Showing You're showing us women how to do it, you know? You inspire me. Oh, you inspire me? Are you kidding? You were all over this year. Yeah. Especially New York. I think I need to go and hang out in New York for maybe like a couple of weeks and just do. The audiences are great there. Um. I love doing comedy there. Yes, I love New York so much. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't been there since Eastville last year. I did a show with Janine Garofalo. That was really nice. Oh, wow. Holy. That was fun. Yeah, that's that's something to brag about. I'll put that right up there. <laughs> wow. So who's been somebody who's been really supportive of your comedy? That you want Me. to change? <laughs> That's what I love about you. You are so off the cuff, real and unique. Me, you, Helene. I mean, you know, <laughs> anybody that lets me into a festival, I feel is supportive of my, actually the Keenan people, Sheree and uh, Keenan. I think it's called Simply 360, if I'm remembering it right. I've done six shows for them now. So, yeah, so they've been very supportive of my journey. Um, And I have a horror story that I don't want to share here, but (laughs) when we talk sometime, (laughs) so embarrassing, the worst embarrassment of my life, but I lived through it. So here I am. But they've been extremely, if anybody out there, you should reach out to Kenan Presents, fantastic shows. The audiences come ready to laugh. They are the best audiences. They really are. Uh, They are just magical. Always a good time. Well, what would you like to say to people that are comedy connoisseurs, not comedy connoisseurs yet, comedians and people, just what would you like to say in closing before you plug everything you're gonna be doing here shortly again? I would say support local comedy. I mean, don't wait for a big headliner 
And again, Keenan said this the best when we were on stage at the last show. He said to the audience, you can say you saw them win. Which I thought was great because it's true. So support local comedy. Go to a coffee shop. Go to a winery or a brewery. Most of the shows are very inexpensive or sometimes free. And you'll see new people working on their craft. It's a it's a great thing to do. I love that. Yeah. So plug where all you're going to be and all your social media. I know you said Carol Johnson Comedy on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Yep. Please and follow me. Follow me because everyone says they don't care how funny we are anymore. They just want us to have a gajillion followers. And I cannot get more followers than a cute animal video. <laughs> yeah. But a cute animal wouldn't be as funny on stage. So there you go. <laughs> so bad, so bad. I am doing a Father's Day show at Mike Drop in San Diego. Um, I think it's called Major Malfunction. So that's going to be fun. And like I said, June 21st in Severna Park, Maryland the charity book show bookstore show um there's a lot of good comedians it's going to be a great show i'm really it, for a while there it was not seeming to come through and then some of these other ladies came in i just think it's going to be it's going to be a great show it's going to be a really good show um, what else laugh riot girl festival like i said they have i think they have open mics most of the night uh, so if you live in Los Angeles, you sh could, should come check them out. Very supportive mics. One of the most supportive mics I've I've been to. Yes, um, it is. Yeah, where else? <laughs> I and think you that's it. Oh, so much. Oh. You can learn oh my so God. Much. I'm in the, this is going to be a scary one. I'm in the Clean Comedy Challenge in Atlanta. And I, and I have a feeling it's church clean which I have no idea what that means. So. <laughs> but it's only three minutes. So that's in July, I want to say. Yeah, July. 19, 20, 21st, I think. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And the rest of July, I have not been to a wedding since I got married. And I have two friends, both of their children are getting married in July, within the same week. It's like, so I'll get some new humor about weddings, right? It's going to be great. <laughs> That's the other thing I'd say to anybody that wants to do comedy. Just look for the funny things in everyday life. That's every, Instead of getting upset, you know, soak in the funny things about the moment, you know. And the nice thing about what you're doing is you're going to a bookstore to help them survive. You're going to this, you're going to that. And that makes you come up with material for this and that and expands, you know, your comedy so much to do that. Right. I'm looking, I'm going to start writing some banned book humor. So is there a, there a good bookstore for that? There you so go. I'm hope I'm hoping we can sell 150 tickets. So come out. It'll be really awesome. And it's real for a really, really good cause. So for you, well, yeah, I I'm forward, hoping it'll be good. I look forward to meeting with you again in person. Yeah, hopefully soon. Gonna, and I know, I don't know when our paths will cross again, but whenever they do, it's always sweet as a cucumber. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I like cucumbers. I love cucumbers. <laughs> well, Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your life again. Is there anything in closing, before we go, closing, that you want to say? Just thank you for having me on. I love spending time with you. I can't wait to do it again. You're the most positive person. I want to say positive and upbeat, but that's repeating myself. You're so <laughs> fun to be around. And you just don't let negative thoughts even come in. You stop them in the bud you I've noticed that about you and I appreciate it so much oh thank we, you we all need people like Carol Johnson around us oh thanks it's like I look at life if you can be in a 30-year relationship and pick yourself up from that 
and just keep going rather than being sad about what is not look forward to the possibilities of what you're given. So that's what I do. I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I would be a horrible, sad person if I was still in that relationship. It would be bad. It would be really bad. Yes, I can so relate. And I think that's what's, what's your secret is people can see there's depth underneath the humor and people really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I do. I appreciate it because I know you're coming from a lot a lot of depth you're not just saying things that you read in a book you lived it and you recommend it oh yeah all my stuff is real so it's sometimes a little too real for people but you know it's my life so same with me <laughs> same with me thank you so much carol johnson talk to you later bye thanks for having me thank you again for taking time to come on carol Oh, thank you. I love doing stuff like this. And yeah. you did, I forget his name now. The one joke a day guy. You did Scott his talk Franklin. thing, right? Scott. Franklin. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Tommy Kovac is a good one too. Have you done his? Who? Tommy Kovac, K-O-V-A-C. Hit him up. Okay. He's good. I will. Okay, I will, definitely. And Sarah Silverman's cousin. I can't recall his name, but I'll try to figure it out. He does a nice. podcast. He does a podcast. Okay, cool. Yeah, I keep saying I need to start a podcast. I don't want to start a podcast. <laughs> but I know it's just like, I know I need to be posting on social media every day. Have I done it this? No, I have. It's been days since I posted <laughs> It's just such a time suck. You know, well, there's another Linda Smith in comedy. So maybe when clubs go to look and see about my following, they'll trip on hers and think it's me. Right. <laughs> I don't know what to say. See you later, Carol. Bye. Have a great day, Linda. Good seeing Bye. you all. All. Do you want me to just share the posters on like Facebook Messenger? Yes, please. I would love I'll it. do that right now. Thank, Thank you, you Carol. so much. You're the best. Carol Johnson Comedy. Thank you. Bye.